welcome people of earth to my channel HT3 my name is Mr. Tap and today we're going to talk about As an 11 year old kid living in a third world country one does not see a lot of movies, especially if you come from a conservative culture. When I was able to finally collect some change from my pocket money to buy a film DVD, I went ahead and bought the most tantalizing DVD cover and interesting plot summary I could find in the form of water bowls. Well, the question is, was it worth it? the hassle? The answer to that question would be a resounding no. I am a huge fan of sci-fi, neo-noirs and dystopian future movies. I love when movies build their own worlds where as a kid my imagination could find accommodation in the said movie world. Which was exactly the reasoning behind me acquiring Waterworld but to my dismay it was a mess of a movie with lackluster and unlikable characters, convoluted plot, I don't even know what to say about the editing as I saw both the theatrical and the Ulysses cut of the movie and let me tell you that was 5 hours of my life wasted for nothing excluding the two times I saw it as a kid. I did see both the cut, uh, both cut of the films recently to understand where my love for the movie Mad Max comes from, you know, the one, you know, good one. And voila, I have struck gold, cause what Waterworld feels like is a Mad Max knockoff, a complete ripoff, but with a stupidly high budget and people who did not know what they were doing with it. Now, give that money to George Miller and you will be presented with Mad Max Fusion easy like, like no competition the best action movie since the start of the 2000s Mad Max Fury Road does the simple things perfectly which is something that is not done as well in any other action film I have seen in my film viewing so Waterworld is about the Mariner played by Oscar winning actor Kevin Costner who is a hybrid of fish and human. He has gills and his feet are weird for some reason. Now, I thought Guillermo del Toro's The Shape of Water seemed familiar. I mean, imagine the fish guy from The Shape of Water and the Mariner side by side. Yeah, they look the same. Anyways, I'm going off topic. Waterworld is about the Mariner who is able to breathe underwater, you know, because of the gills and stuff. And also because it came from a mutation in a world which has gone underwater because of global warming. He finds and sells dirt in the middle of the sea to a market where they find out that he is a mutant and they try to kill him because you know racism and stuff. He escapes with the help of two lovely people, one of them being a small girl named Lona. My first thought about the name this time around was where is Shama and is this a cinematic universe and if not do I want it to be one. Ilona is played by Tina Majorino or Tina Majorino I'm not sure please don't attack me who went on to play roles in the movie Napoleon Dynamite and the show Veronica Mars. The truth is she was so annoying in this movie that it destroyed her career even as a child. The other person is Helen, played by Jean Triplehorn, who also starred alongside Michael Douglas in the 1992 erotic thriller classic Basic Instinct. My god, she has bad luck with men on the big screen when she offers herself to the mariner and gets almost raked in Waterworld. I don't think I need to talk about what happens to her in Basic Instinct because that would make my channel a 18 plus channel you know, R-rated, not a family-friendly channel. Together, 
the three of them set off on a journey to find dry land. May the adventure begins. Enola has a map on her back which has the coordinates of dry land. But since the world has turned upside down, the only person who can read the map cannot figure it out. Because you know, he has not taken the account taken it into account. Then there is Deacon played by Dennis Hoffman who was just plain bad as the main villain of the movie. I'm not gonna mention any of uh, any other of the characters because they were even more bland. I still think Ilona was a better villain of, of the movie than Deacon. I really hated that kid. After several events they get separated and Ilona is taken by Deacon. The mariner goes to the ship of the Deacon and destroys it all by himself because apparently he is Captain Aquaman, which I was not been made aware of. I mean, wait, where the, where did he become? Like, when did he become, you know, a superhero? At the end, they do find land, but the mariner has to depart because he does not feel at ease on land because, you know, mutation. And that is the end of the movie. The Ulysses cut has a few extra dialogues and the fact that the dry land they find actually is the top of Mount Everest. Ooh. So, Washerwood has a thin veil of racial awareness only when they have to make a quippy one-liner. That is finding different ways to call Kevin Costner a freak that is. If any, they wanted to say something about the act of racism and it being an issue, which I'm pretty sure was not the case, but they didn't really want to say much about you no know, racial stuff. It is too weak to say the least. There is no overarching theme, and if there was one, it flew right over my little noggin. Overall, it is just a poorly edited mess of a film, and the fact that I'm I use the fact the phrase poorly edited twice is because the film was edited by you know the one and only Kevin. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Kevin Costner, sir. So yeah, it's poorly edited. The film is poorly edited. Yeah, anyways, it would have been better being an 80s action movie with a runtime of 80 to 90 minutes at best. There is no likable characters. The, the emotional center point of the film is Enola, and she is borderline the worst character in the movie. I'm sorry. Let me correct myself. Ilona is the worst and the most annoying character in the movie, where there is supposed to be two people worse than her. So, without the emotional center point, you don't really care what happens to these characters. The mariner played by Mr. Kevin Sir is still figuring out figuring out who he should be during the movie. That would be great as character de development if the changes in his behavior had actual reasons behind it. We are introduced to the mariner as a fish guy who hates humans because humans hate him. But none of the female leads do anything that would make him like them enough to do the things he does. I mean, yeah, I, I don't really understand much of it. I did see it as a kid and I did watch it twice just before making this video. So. You know what, I'd really like to ask the director who's, who was not able to edit the film because Mr. Kevin Sir had to just take that away because it's his film and he made it with a 160 to 185 billion budget, dollar budget, which, uh, which was, I'm sorry, which was the highest budgeted film of all time at the at the year of 1997 can you imagine 1997 160 million to 185 million dollars behind this movie <sighs> i would put uh, i mean i would rate waterworld a 3 out of 10 at best i mean i'm being kind i should give it, give it a zero but then again, it did build a world where I would have been, I would have liked to, you know, be in. I, I, I'm not really sure about that if I want to be in Waterworld. 
unless like I'm on Mount Everest. If I am on Mount Everest, then I would like to be in Waterworld. Other than that, I don't really want to be. Or maybe I want to be one of the guys with the gills and you know the feet. I don't really think people being you know racist against me would be huge of a factor as long as I don't you know show them my ears and my feet. I guess. Anyways, at the end, I would like, I would just like to say one thing: you should, you should not watch this film. And I would put it in the please. I mean, please avoid category of films. Thank you for watching this video. My name is Mr. Tai. This is my channel HD3. And please like, comment, subscribe. And until next time. I am Mr. Tai and take it easy.